Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditations in all of our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. Our first reading passage this morning is from Psalm 127, verses 1 through 5. Listen now as God speaks to us in God's word. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives sleep to his beloved. Sons are indeed a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb of reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the sons of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gates. May this God's word speak to our hearts, our minds, our spirits. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There are many things in life that, when I was taught earlier, or perhaps I took it on myself, that I was wrong. We we're taught from an early age that the harder you work, the more ahead you're going to be, the more things you're going to have, the more happy you are going to be. There's, there is a disconnect of time between working hard and being productive, between rising up early, going to bed late, if the only reward we get is the bread of anxious toil. I love that phrase, the bread of anxious toil. It is, we do not eat what is good, we eat what only makes us hungrier and hungrier and hunger, and so much of our society, so much of our world is the busier you are, we think we are honoring God, but in many ways God says to be still, to open our hearts, to open our ears, and to listen. There's a story about a new pastor who comes to a church and he said, I've got great news for you. We have enough money to finish our capital campaign, we have enough money to to fulfill our stewardship drive, we even have enough money to pay off all of our debts. The congregation, just with an uproarious cheer, just is so excited. And then the pastor says, but the thing is, it's all in your wallets, and it's all in your purse, and it's all in your checking account. And so in the stewardship season, when we talk about these things, and, and sometimes we go to stewardship season, we go to church in November, like we go to the dentist. We know that it's going to be good. We know ultimately it's going to be beneficial, but we, we think it's going to hurt. And so we tense up a little bit because we're afraid we can ask for money. We're going to ask for money over and over and over again. But our theme this season is more than enough. And we're going to explore, we did that last week and this week and next week as well, what that really looks like, what that really means. And our second scripture passage is a familiar one from Mark chapter 12, verse 38 through 44. Listen as God speaks to us in God's word. As Jesus talked, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearances say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums, but a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury, for all of them have contributed out of their abundance but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. May this, God's word, speak to our hearts, our minds, our spirits. This, too, is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I grew up with a mom who grew up, not, when she was not in India as a child, she grew up in West Texas. And Irma once said, I come from a family where gravy is considered a beverage. And that is what I grew up with. You knew you had gravy. You knew you had plenty of it. Nobody was classy eating biscuits and gravy. It's not one of those things where you have fine linens. I've been to some restaurants where they try 
like to class it up, but it, it costs like eight dollars, and it's, it's a little bit ridiculous. But because it's biscuits, and it's and it's gravy, and it's pork, and it's grease, and it's flour, and it's milk, and, and pepper, and, and if you're in my family, a little bit of celery seed, and that's what makes the difference. And you have to come and taste and see. It's a poor person's meal. It comes from poor backgrounds. At the beginning of the day, a little bit of gravy goes a long way. Biscuits and, and gravy at the beginning of the day, something hearty to get the early morning started for a long day of wait, a long day of work, a ideal field for feeding a large crowd. Well, the thing is, with gravy, if you need more, you just add a little bit of water, a little bit of milk, perhaps a little bit of flour. I've never had manna from heaven, but I assume it tastes like this one. And I assume it, 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 it tastes this image. And, and that's the thing, like manna, gravy does not keep. Have you ever tried to store gravy? You try to freeze gravy? It's not the same. It's here today, it's gone tomorrow, so you might as well use it. You might as well share it because there's more than enough. And so in the stewardship season, we say there's more than enough. What does that mean? I think of gravy over and over and over again. But I look at my life and I say, where am I life? This is the question we pose to the Johnsons, we pose to Colby in the video is, what does more than enough mean to you? And I look at my life. And I look at my life as, as a pastor. I used to think as a kid, the pastor was, was maybe six inches closer to God than the rest of us because of where we stood in the pulpit. But in reality, I look at my pantry and I've got more than enough. I don't need any food. I have my pantry. I look at my closet. I have more clothes than I need. I have more than enough. I look even at my checking account and, and even sometimes I might compare myself to my neighbors or what I imagine my neighbors have in their checking accounts and somehow I come out look at it have more in there. But I realize I have more than enough. But with God, I don't always trust that I have enough. And this is so much of our, our lives. We hold on to things. But the, the message and the good news of the gospel is, is that we open our hands to receive God's love and God's grace and God's mercy. But also we open our hands to each other, recognizing that if we have even a little it's probably more than enough. Jesus is hanging out with his disciples. He is people watching. And the big givers, the old money families in town, they, they come by and they make a big deal. And this is a little convicting, right? Because he talks about the religious leaders, the scribes who like to walk around in long robes. They you know, like to say long prayers. And believe me, my next prayer is going to be a short one because of this. And they like to do all these different things because they want people to notice them. And they give and they give and they give. But they have so much that really the proportion of what they're giving is not impacting them at all. They don't miss it. These movers and the shakers, they don't care who sees them, but the more people who see them, really in their eyes, the better. And then a widow comes in. And this is the thing in the Bible. If you hear about a widow, we're going to talk about a different widow here in a few moments. When you hear the word widow, you need to pay attention. Because these are the marginalized. These are the people who are on the edges of society. These are the people who have no husband. This, again, is a patriarchal society. They have no husband to support them, so they have to rely on their neighbors. They have to rely on um, the community of faith. They have to rely on all these different things. They can't control in, in their own destiny so much. And so the widow comes in. She's meek. She's quiet. She gives two small copper coins. Proportionally, it's way more because it's all she had. And she just said, pay attention to her. She is given more in God's eyes than all these other folks. She trusts in God. She trusts in the community of faith. This story's always made me a little bit edgy and sometimes angry. But here, this woman, I said, well, what are you going to live on? But she's trusting not in what she's going to be able to do, but she's trusting in her neighbors, the neighbors who follow God. This reason the story from the Bible, I oftentimes wonder, is because God notices, God sees our hearts, God knows where we're at. I believe that God hears sometimes the most beautiful voices. And you know, we, we'll get towards Christmas, we hear uh, the holiday chorus, we hear all these different beautiful things. 
the people who sing it with the most lovely of voices, but their heart is not in it. And I think God hears perhaps even those broken, those broken off-tune words that come from a heart just loves the Lord and that's being overwhelming in that love. It's not the best voice, but the open heart that God hears. It's not the biggest gift, but the trusting one that God receives. There's a story about the widow of Zarephath. This is the first king's story about a famine that's going on throughout the land. And Zarephath is in the Bible. It's a place that's over there. It's a place that's not in the good graces of the good Jewish family. It's a place that's over there. And Elijah comes and he sees this widow and he asks her for a drink. And she goes to get him a drink while she's gathering sticks. And then he says, will you bring me something to eat? And the woman says, all I have is a little bit of meal. All I have is a little bit of flour, a little bit of oil. I've gathered sticks so I might cook that meal for myself and my son that we might eat it and that we might die. She's preparing her last meal. She's preparing just the first life. She says, if you're going to do that, make the meal first, give me some. This sounds like I would never think to do that. I think, what kind of counseling program can we work with you? What can, community agency can we get you involved in? But if Elijah said, first give me something to eat. And she does. And then the story goes that the meal, the grain does not run out. The oil is not dry out. That there is more than enough, not just for her and herself, but also for Elijah. Oil, milk, and flour. It's great. It's basic. But God came to us, and we talked about this with the water of battles. God came to us in the ordinary things of life. When Jesus said, He described himself as, I am the bread of life. He comes in water, in bread, and in wine. To the widows who are on the margins to show us who perhaps are not. But there is a better way forward. Finally, yesterday, we were at Hillcrest Presbyterian Church up in Springfield. And a thank you for all those who helped here at the church with the work day. And a thank you to all of you all who helped with the disaster to prepare for this bucket. These are these blue loaves buckets that uh, we took. And there's over 100, 120 buckets that were collected among all the churches of John Calvin Presbyterian. Now those buckets go in, in the ones that we've most recently collected. They're now in South Carolina with the flight. And so I'm thankful for you all. I'm thankful for that. And last week I was walking through Sam's Club. And when I go to Sam's Club, I always find things I, I didn't realize I needed. And one of these things, and I didn't buy it, but it was interesting. That, that there are these buckets that are the same size. But it's a disaster right this bucket. But it's complete with 50 meals for you. 50 meals, and so there are people who also need to buy these things, and it's not in and of itself a bad thing, but it is hoarding something for yourself. It's hoarding something for yourself, it's eating the bread of anxious toil over and over and over again, and never being filled. The good news of the gospel is, is that we have open hands, and that we trust that when we give, should disasters happen, and we know disaster can and will happen in our area, then we trust in the good nature of believers and sometimes even non-believers elsewhere that God will provide. Finally, Jesus came to us in ordinary things. Ordinary flesh, ordinary blood, and ordinary life. A poor son of a carpenter from the sticks. And he came and they use these ordinary things to proclaim God's kingdom, God's coming reign, Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus arrived 2,000 years ago, and he arrives today and every day through the power of the Holy Spirit to let us know that he is more than enough. So may our hearts and may our hands be open to receive that gift. And may our hearts and our hands be open to share it with others, because there is more than enough. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.